Hello, welcome to Behind the Scenes with me. I have Liz Nyamura. If you have not watched part one, you better watch part one. Uh, she was telling us what really happened to her. How did she come to know that she's sick? And in this part, she'll be telling us how the sickness affected her spiritually, emotionally, financially, and physically. Perhaps you can tell us the last part you talked to us about the surgery and the surgery was here in Kenya and I know you ended up in India. So how did you end up in India? Maybe you can just share that part. Hi everyone. Yes, like Pastor Sambi said, my name is Liz Nyambura and yes, um, I did surgery in December, November 16th. And so come December, I was still in pain um, because there was nothing anybody could do about it because they said that the tumor was in the pancreas and that uh, the main blood vessel had wrapped itself around the tumor and nobody could touch it. And so I got to know about India, that there was a surgery that I can do, that the doctors here don't do, but they can do it in India. And uh, so I went to India on the 3rd of January. Um, the surgery I went for is called CyberKnife. CyberKnife is a surgery where they don't have to open you up. You, they let you do this. It's actually called it's a robotic surgery where the, the robot does the surgery itself on you when you're fully clothed. And it's an hour. Uh, usually it's, it takes an hour to do that surgery. But it does, it's done like five days in a row. So I went to, I went to India in January and the third, the first week they did a lot of tests and then the doctors had a meeting. They all agreed that yes, where the tumor is, nobody can do it. And so they, the best option was to do cyber knife. And so I was scheduled to do cyber knife the second week of, of January. Yes. Of 2022. 2022, yes. Okay. Oh, so that was just before my stroke. So mm -hmm. when you heard that you are going to India, how did you feel at that point? That now the doctors here in Kenya have lost hope. Now you you turn to India. How did you feel when you were told that we need to take you to India? I was very excited because the pain, I knew now the pain is coming to an end. Remember I have been in this, I have, I've had this pain from October. So the whole of October, the whole of November, come December, I couldn't eat, I couldn't walk, I couldn't drive, I couldn't work. And so when there was an alternative to where now I'll have a normal life again, I grabbed that opportunity and actually was so excited to go to India. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And when you went to India, um, were you still in pain or had the pain gone down? Or when you did the first surgery, did the pain went, uh, go away? Or how was your physical state at that point? Actually, um, the pain was still a lot. In fact, now it had increased because I guess mentally I knew that now I have this tumor in my stomach that cannot be removed. So mentally I was tortured and then physically I was, I was in pain. And um, when I went to India, unfortunately it was the, during the time of COVID. So we had to be quarantined. And um, I was in a hotel for the first seven days because the hotel said you can't, you can't go to the hospital until you are quarantined. And so those seven days were the longest seven days I've had in quarantine because I couldn't move, I couldn't eat, I'm in pain, I can see the hospital is right across the street and I couldn't go. But I just had to go by what they were saying. So after the seven days, I was the most excited person to see myself now, getting out of the hotel to go to the hospital. Yeah. Wow, wow. And this journey, Liz, um, I know it has affected you. So, so yes. how has it affected you? Physically, physically, you said it was painful, you are feeling pain, stomach pain, you are itching. But how has it affected you or how did it affect you mentally, financially and emotionally and even spiritually? 
uh, how did that affect you um it affected me very much because remember i'm in pain so when they did the cyber knife uh they explained to me what they're going to do and so the first day they did cyber knife and the, the, they did for one hour unfortunately when they did the scan they also realized that i had another tumor in the liver that had not been diagnosed in kenya yeah so that was also another shock because now it's like okay fine so they said we it's a good thing that we have discovered it now so we're going to do surgery on this tumor on the pancreas in the morning and then the tumor on the liver for the liver in the afternoon so that's one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon so i said that's fine so with that i was encouraged because i knew now we're coming to an end of this pain and i guess that's why i was in so much pain because i had two tumors in the stomach and i didn't know and so when they started the first day they did the surgery the second day by the third day i was able to feel much better i started walking i started eating and i felt you know like a person all over again but it drained me so much physically and um, mentally physically and in, and financially because it's a not it's not a cheap surgery it's very expensive but when you compare what you're going through with the money you can't there's no comparison so for me it was it was something that was a relief for me that I'm actually getting treated for something that no doctor could treat me in Kenya I was very excited about that and spiritually i kept thanking god because i felt god had given had come through for me when no one else could by giving me this idea to come to india and actually talking to these doctors and them saying yes we can do it well on the other hand all i kept hearing is we can do it so for me that was a relief a great relief yeah and i know you yes. you lead house groups you said you led Uh, uh, the one in lab in in langata zone leader regional leader so how was your spiritual life um in india because i know you stayed there for a while um it was it was it was very it was it was very good because the house group people kept in touch you know they kept encouraging me they kept praying for me and they would, you know they would lift me up when i'm down you know because when you're in pain you kind of like you can't pray you want to pray but you can't pray but i'm so glad because like the word says in psalm 34 verse 7 that the lord will send angels to encamp around me. i had angels around me who encamped around me who encouraged me because sometimes i would feel so down wondering you know why me why did this have to happen to me and two why did it have to be something that cannot be removed but i never questioned god because the house group people kept saying don't worry release this is a testimony something good is coming out of it and because i'm a leader they kept you know the pastors also were involved the deacons were involved and they kept praying for me and encouraging me sending me words of encouragement which at some time that's all you need just words of encouragement because you are in a foreign country they, they they don't know they don't know christ they don't even know god but you're in a country where all you need are prayers and that kept me going because even when i couldn't pray i knew somebody somewhere was interceding for me and so for me that was such a great moment for me to know that i am not alone yeah awesome 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 thanks for sharing and for those who are not in house group uh, i'll encourage you uh, to join a house group as once a house group pastor i know the benefit of being a house group people praying for you we'll get to that point of how you dealt with the illness and how you are feeling much better now i know but before i let you go as we come to the end of part 2 there's someone watching again and they in that state where it's hard for them emotionally they're feeling drained perhaps very anxious uh they, they feel their body is failing them they don't have strength physical strength they can't even pray um they are mentally unstable um and i'm saying that because i've been there uh, not too long ago what can you tell that person who is also struggling financially to raise funds for their own medical um needs what can you tell that person who is watching 
because I know they are watching. Yeah, for me at this point, I'll tell anybody who's watching that there, there is no other person who can help you more than God. God is a provider. He knows where this. He owns a thousand years and a thousand cattle. He knows. He knows where he's going to. He's going to get this money for you to be treated. And when you're down, remember this is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So he knows exactly what needs to be done. And so don't be discouraged. Just remember that God is on your side. You and God are the majority, and that God is going to see you through that. If every day you're seeing a new day, just remember you're seeing a new day because God has great plans for you. And so just keep praying. Just keep seeking His face. When you can't pray, just praise God. When you can't pray, just lift up His name. Listen to, you know, gospel music, and that will keep will keep you going. But don't give up. Whatever happens, don't give up. And you have to have the right mindset. Because once you have the right mindset, you'll be able to overcome this. Because it is not you alone. You, there are so many others of you, like us who are going through this. But God is an overcomer. He said we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And so we we have to fight this, and we fight together. And we, me and God, we are the majority. So no one else can conquer us. That's all I can say. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, for encouraging. If you are watching here and you feel encouraged, you can type an amen right there at the comment section below. If you have a story you want to share with us, uh, I have a story I will be sharing soon. And uh, Liz is sharing her story now. In the last part, uh, part three, we, she'll talk about how she overcame the situation she had and how she's feeling now. But if you are there and you want to share your story, go to parkevirtual at parklabaptist.org, send me an email, and I'll, I'll get you right into our, into this conversation. But Liz, thank you so much for your time. Um, your story really encouraged me. I know I was not there for you because I was also <laughs> I was also having my own challenges with stroke. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah. but I've been following your story, and God has really really done amazing things in your life. And I know your story will really encourage others who are watching. Perhaps are behind the pews, they have their own story. And I look forward to hearing part three in a few. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.